Hello, people. So I know I'm late to the party with this topic, but I figured better late than never. So here it is. This is what would be my bucket list for the new Modern Warfare. Now, this game was originally announced back in May when I was playing Dying Light, but when I was finishing up Dying Light, I kind of hit into some personal issues. I mean, you all know. I don't want to thank you once again for the support. But uh, I might as well just do it now and say what are the stuff that I most definitely hope for in this new Modern Warfare. The number one thing that I most definitely hope for is that China would actually be an antagonist in this game. Now, the perfect World War III scenario in my case would be with the West, including NATO and its partners, fighting at the very minimum an alliance between Russia and China. Now, as you know, Russia has already been confirmed to be one of the countries in the game. I mean, one of the main antagonists will be a rogue Russian general. And as you can tell by the multiplayer trailer, you will see Russian troops. So that just leaves China into the mix. Well, I mean, this is something to hope for. I mean, let's not get too hasty immediately, but who knows? According to a tropes a website on the internet, it says that it is quite possible that Call of Duty will be reflecting current events and one of the enemies would indeed be China. Oh yes, this is going to be quite good. I, that is what I seriously hope would be the case. Now I know exactly why video game developers have to be careful with adding China as a villain in their games because as you know, China doesn't really like being portrayed as the villain in foreign films and video games are a victim to that too. You guys probably know of Battlefield 4. Well, did you know that Battlefield 4 was actually banned in China because they portrayed China as the main villain who was an ultimate aggressor that wanted to invade everyone else? The Ministry of Culture actually made a statement saying that the game is a pure act of aggression, that it was an actual national security risk because the US was trying to instigate a cultural invasion of China. Yeah, that's actually how bad. I guess we don't need to bring up all the guns if you kind of want to invade China. Just make a video game and, you know, it'll make the citizens rise up. Just like we're seeing in Hong Kong right now. And there's also another piece of evidence that might show up that China could be one of the main villains in this game. Like, in one of the uh, multiplayer playthroughs, people actually showed the QBZ-95. In case anyone didn't know, that is the standard service rifle of the Chinese military, and it is still in use. And in case you didn't know, China is the main villain in Black Ops 2. Now, another thing for it to be the, the perfect World War III game that I kind of desire, it has to have this most definitely. It has to see combat on both European soil and North American soil. Now, that is what I most definitely love. I mean, as we can tell by the trailer, now, as we can tell by the trailer, we're most definitely going to be seeing one location. I mean, I personally have a negative opinion of the United Kingdom, but hey, London, which is in Europe, is at least going to be one part. And also, several descriptions of the game will indeed note that European cities, like, they put cities, meaning plural, meaning more European cities will be involved, are actually going to also be the location of several battles. And it also has to have the United States and or Canada also in that mix. And it, it is possible we'll be getting that. I mean, let's cross our fingers. But we did see that definitely in all three of the original Modern Warfare games. In Modern Warfare 1, the Russian ultranationalists launched nukes at the US. In Modern Warfare 2, World War 3 in that timeline begins when Russia invades the United States. And in Modern Warfare 3, we see the war in America end when the US forces, and I'll put NATO forces in this case because I think that there were also NATO troops there, they actually succeeded in forcing the remaining Russians out of the United States. So I really hope that they would show that and it would also be even better if we got to see Canadian soil also in the mix. I mean, that would make me really happy. <laughs> The next thing that I'm 
really excited and I really hope they put in this game is indeed missile defenses. Now, I do not like nuclear deterrence. I'm going to be talking about that on my political channel sometime soon. But I do not like the idea of nuclear deterrence whatsoever because it just doesn't work. You'll hear that later on if you would like to know. But finally, I would actually like to see missile defenses, at least on a small scale, take out nukes uh, from each side, like whoever it is. And we've actually seen missile defenses in the Call of Duty games. Like, for example, in Modern Warfare 2, Vandenberg Air Force Base, that is a place inside California where ground-based mid-course defenses are stationed. They are designed to shoot down ICBMs in Call of Duty Ghosts. You see a ton of missile defenses. For one, you see the Aegis ship. An Aegis ship is basically a high-powered naval vessel, basically a warship, and it has the capability of shooting down missiles, including nuclear missiles, both inside and outside the Earth's atmosphere. And then we also see them again when you play as a tank company and you have to take out Federation missile defenses in order to allow the orbital bombardment to occur. We also get to see them in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, where the US Air Force will shoot down iron ICBM filled with all those toxic uh, disease chemicals. I mean, basically, you listen to this. Advised, we will be forced to strike the command center if you are unable to stop the launch. We'll risk further manticore contamination, but it will be our only option. If you don't think you can stop it, get the hell out of there. Copy that. Well, yeah, technically that is the case. The boost phase, which is a phase when the miss nuclear missile goes up, is the most vulnerable phase. And that is one way of shooting down a nuclear missile. Hoo yeah! And also, let's not forget Call of Duty Infinite Warfare with the Iron Shield, which is basically Earth's Iron Shield. On Allied traffic. Always vigilant, Lieutenant. You familiar with the air intercept systems, Ethan? Earth's Iron Shield. Major firepower. In case you didn't know, the Iron Shield has a nickname. It's also called the Iron Dome. And the Iron Dome is indeed one kind of Israeli missile defense. In the last conflict, it shot down 90% of all Palestine missiles flying into Israeli territory. And I figure that's even more impressive when you note that Palestine fired over 3,000 missiles at Israel in that flight. <laughs> And yes, I'm going to be a little biased here, but the main thing, the main, well, sort of the main thing, but one thing that I really want to see in this next Call of Duty is to finally see some Canadian troops. Now, this wouldn't be the first time we see Canadian troops in Call of Duty. We also had a Canadian campaign in Call of Duty 3. We saw Canadians as a part of Task Force 141 in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and we get to hear about them in Modern Warfare 3. We also have uh, the Canadian flag in Advanced Warfare. Apparently at that time, Canada is now a member of the UN Security Council. And of course, let's not forget Kashima from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And I also have to add that if, if, Kashima hadn't died in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Infinite Warfare would actually be um, my favorite Call of Duty game. Kind of an unpopular opinion right there. So there you go, people. That's my bucket list for Modern Warfare, and I really hope that that does happen. In any case, let me know what are you most interested in about when it comes to Modern Warfare. Let me know in the comments below.